good evening friends welcome back to my channel pediatric classes uh, so this time we are actually going to start with a different uh, type of uh, uh, classes uh, so it, this actually not a class it are, these are just some uh, questions so i have got some uh, requests from my subscribers uh, regarding like uh, how can we improve uh, the learning skills so what i was thinking was like uh, if we in this practical time like it is not possible to listen to a whole videos and you know, a little difficult so it's always uh, learning by challenging that's what i always feel when we actually encounter some questions uh, then we tend to think okay what may be the probable answers then we can actually read up on related topics and then come back uh, with the answers so this session will be a a few very few questions i'll be discussing uh, so this is like uh, this is mcq series so this will come maybe in a week once or twice it will be coming and you have you need to spend hardly 5 minutes to just go through this uh, questions so my request to the uh, pg neat aspirants and also those people who are aiming for super specialty and other exams like if any of the answers if you don't know make it a point to just jot it down in your notebooks uh, or because every time it is not practically possible to uh, go back and see through this videos i'll be posting this uh, this particular class will be based on the nelson textbook of pediatrics so most of the classes i am planning to base it on the nelson because that is our uh, book right so Uh, this session will be on allergic rhinitis this is starting of it so allergic rhinitis we cannot discuss all the mcqs in this session so i will be discussing a very few number of uh, mcqs here so with this intro let me actually start uh, sharing my screen i hope all of you have subscribed to me this channel so if you have not yet subscribed make it a point to please subscribe this to this channel and also click the bell icon because this uh, series otherwise you may actually uh, miss it out so i'll try to label it properly like in the sense uh, mcq series 1 2 3 likewise so this will be the topic uh, allergy rhinitis that is part 1 reference will be nelson textbook of pediatrics 21st edition okay so this will be the first question what is the prevalence of allergic rhinitis so we all know allergy is very very common and this actually comprises not just of allergic rhinitis but it is actually a spectrum uh, comprising of asthma allergy to atopic dermatitis and this is huge spectrum so of that we will be discussing about a few questions on allergic rhinitis so what exactly is the prevalence of allergic rhinitis so before uh, the option a 5 to 10 percent b 10 to 15 percent C twenty to thirty percent and D thirty five to forty percent. I will actually give a break of one uh, half or little bit of a time so that you can actually think and commit. Uh, the best way to learn is to commit. So once you commit, if it is right, you feel happy. If you are wrong, nothing. There is nothing, nothing to lose. We can actually always correct. So what exactly is the answer? so now I have one more thing. Uh, you want the answers at the end of each class, or you want the answers. in uh, like at the end of the session or you want it in another uh, video all this you can actually uh, put us the uh, comments in the comment box okay so this session i will be giving the answers then and there with the uh, questions so the answer for this question is option c that is 20 to 30 percentage is the prevalence of allergic rhinitis so how many fold increase in risk of asthma do the children of allergic rhinitis have so many times we are actually encountered this question in the op by the parents so they keep asking us so my child is having uh, allergic rhinitis so is the child having risk of asthma is one of the answer is answer option b that is e fold increase in the risk of asthma in any child with allergic rhinitis so here i would like to uh, I remind you the session on asthma will discuss in detail later. Okay, so the diagnosis of allergic rhinitis is established by the time the child reaches the age of. So can we find the uh, uh, like or establish diagnosis of allergic rhinitis by two years or by four years or six years or eight years? And according to the Nelson, the allergic rhinitis diagnosis is established mostly by the time the child reaches the. Six years of age, but please note here if the question is prevalence peaks in the the question is like that the prevalence actually peaks late in childhood. Okay, 
Now, next question number four. A significant risk factor in the development of allergic rhinitis is option A, positive family history of ATP, option B, serum IgA more than 100 international units per ml, option C, alcoholic mother, option D, diabetic mother. And the correct answer to this question is so, our uh, answer is question uh, answer option A. That is positive family history of ATP. So, uh, about the option B, if the serum IgE, the IgE should be the factor which will be raised in cases of ATP. So, or allergy, uh, allergic rhinitis. So, another thing, what about this alcoholic diabetes? They are not actually risk factors. But a mother who is actually a smoker, both when the, she is carrying the cell or in the, in the, in the personal time also, if the History of smoking in the mother is a risk factor for the development of allergic rhinitis. Now, the question number five, early introduction of all the following decreases the risk of asthma and allergic rhinitis except option A, rye, option B, fish, option C, egg and option D, meat. And the correct answer is option D, that is meat. Uh, so I have a, a small, I made a small mnemonic here for the students. This is like bro EF. That means early introduction of barley, rye, oats, wheat, egg and fish. They are actually found to reduce the uh, risk of asthma and allergic rhinitis. Okay. So in this question, the answer is very obvious. The answer is D. So in this session, actually, like so many questions we are discussing, these are all there from the Nelson textbook of pediatrics only. So uh, this is the question number five. And you will be wondering what are the next questions. Uh, so in this session, I am discussing only five questions. So I have uh, I need uh, uh, some comments in the comment box regarding whether you need more questions daily or uh, in a week base or you want the answers at the end of the or this answer questions or uh, like like and uh, uh, in the end of every question or is it like you want the answers at the end of all the questions so these things actually you can uh, put in a comment box and whether the session uh, is useful whether you need to have more sessions like this all this please uh, make it a point to put in the comment box and if you like this session please put it uh, like sign also okay thank you so much and uh, wait for the next class that will be coming soon bye take care